don't, I rarely teach specific technique classes at the camps because it's not everyone who can use it or it doesn't maybe fit their game or stuff. Um, but now and then I will, I will throw some in, like this one. Um, so if it doesn't exactly work for you, uh, sorry, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> it might not be for everyone. It's a little bit advanced, as I put it as intermediate advanced. Um, so it might also, if it's too complicated, free, feel free to just sit out or whatever. Um, but it's, uh, it's, I would say, probably my, my go-to A-game guard stuff um, that I use all the time. On, uh, I, I try it on everyone, so, um, so uh, it's something that I'm pretty confident in. So let's see if, if I can also uh, make it work for you. Uh, Alex, are you joining the class? Can you be my... my Alex moves so well for, for just a blue belt. Uh, okay, uh, so... Okay, as if you did any of the, the defensive classes, we know, all know that what you need to defend always is, is the space between kind of your armpits and, and your knees. Like this, yeah? That goes for every position on bottom and the exact same in the guard. Right? Because the definition of every top position in the world is my opponent being in this space. Yeah. So we don't have to talk too much about that, but when I'm in the guard, all I have to do is to keep this space really tight and closed. Yeah? I can open, but only when I have really good control. So <clears throat> that means if I want to choose a guard to design my game around, I want it to have a default position that's, that's fairly closed. Yeah? If my default guard position is very open, then I need to uh, work harder to, to defend myself or attack more. So, he, so I put him more in, in defense. Yeah? So I like to base my guard around like just kind of a position like this. Yeah? I don't want to reach and open up unless I really have to. So um, that's why I really like this guard, because it's literally just all from here. Now, I, I rarely ever open up, I just play from this position. Yeah? So when he's in my guard, I just, I'm just kind of like this. Yeah? And I like to hold my, my knees, uh, both so it's more difficult for him to open up, but also because it looks pretty cool when you like, grab your knees like that. I, I feel like I look like Keenan a little bit or something, yeah? <laughs> like this, yeah? Or I grip or whatever. I'll do it. Uh, I, Another time I'll do a class on guard defense. But the point is that I like to build my guard around this posture. Yeah, this is the default posture that if, if shit hits the fan, I need to get back to this. Yeah? I don't need to do this if things are, bad, are difficult. Yeah? So uh, very often he will step in with, with one leg. And most of the time uh, he will step one, one right leg in, in front like this. And I'm going to, and the, the guard pretty much looks like this. Yeah? Uh, reverse de la Hiva, I think we should. Name is something else soon. I, I think that guy was not was not handling that sexual harassment case very well, but that's another story. Um, so uh, how to get there is um, uh, it can happen in many different ways. I can. Oh, you, you're moving so much, but I'm yeah. trying to talk. So sometimes he, he will go for like a knee slide pass. Yeah, and that's when I when I put in the hook and get the position. And sometimes I'm gonna kind of actively go shoot in and get the position. Yeah. But let's just try the position first. So he has got one leg in front. It's usually his right leg. And this is an, another, another um, talk, but if you are in the position to choose on top which leg to put in front, always put your left leg in front and always pass to this side. Yeah, because 90% of people will go this way always because they're right-handed. So if you could build a strong game to so this side, he will pass to the side where I'm, I'm less used to defending. Yeah? But anyway. They usually always put the right leg in front, and I'm gonna wrap it up on the inside, and I'm gonna hook this, this, this foot really tight on the leg, yeah? Um, we can do it from kind of a, he can, he can take like kind of a, almost like a knee on belly position, but he, he's just on, on, my, on my thigh, yeah? So I hook that up, and then I grab his, uh, his heel, like a little bit above the heel on the, on the Achilles, yeah? Uh, no thumb, just, just go deep around the, his, his leg down here, yeah? The other foot, I'll put the, the toes in the, in, the, in the hip, and for now, I'll just grab opposite column. Yeah? Thumb down, like that, and just grab here. This is like my basic position that I like to go to. There are many variations where I do different grips. I even put the foot here. I go deep on the, on the leg or something, or, uh, but don't worry about it for now. Let's just, let's just practice like the optimal scenario. So one hook is really deep, 
one, just the toes in the hip, not, not too far, so it becomes like a leg drag, just like that. And then I grab the collar, thumb down, thumb on the inside, and I, I hold here. Yeah? So now, actually, the more weight he puts into to the, the pass, the more he's stuck. Uh, he, he really cannot get, remember he has to get into this space between my knees and chest. This, this, it's really difficult for him to get in there, right? And I'm gonna keep some of his weight off with my, with my toes, with this hook, and also with my forearm. So even if his, his head tried to come down, I got my forearm to, to, to hold him. Right? And even though I'm really compressed here, this is a very, very uh, comfortable situation for me. Even if he puts in a lot of weight onto me, I can really uh, feel comfortable in this position, yeah? So let's just try that first. Just, just put the right leg in, you wrap it up on the inside, toes go high, toes on the hip, grab his heel, uh, thumb on the inside like that, or even if, if you have thumb issues, you can, you can go like this, but, and then forearm across the chest. Yeah? So that's the position. And you can see this position is a very tight, it's a little just this. Yeah, so it's very difficult for him to open that up and start passing. Yeah? Okay, let's try that position first, and then we, uh, Try to play a little bit from there. Let's go. In any, in any uh, guard, for him to attack efficiently, he has to touch both my legs. Yeah, that's like a rule of thumb in the guard. He needs to get to my back leg. Yeah, so that's why on top, if you practice it, just get the position. If you practice it like this, this is not realistic. Because this means I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm going to be swept in one second. Yeah? So anytime I'm, I'm on top, I always want to keep that leg away from me. Yeah? So that's why the position will look like this. Yeah? Look at my back leg. It will never look like this. Yeah? If it looks like this, he's not even, he's done with the guard. He's already about to sweep me. Yeah? So when you're on top, you always keep that rear leg back. Yeah? Don't stand like this. He's going to sweep you immediately. Okay? So let's try a little bit more. So, so that takes a little bit of practice, uh, especially when the opponent is, is not actually resisting. It's a little bit easier when they actually try to pass and stuff. So let's just try two, two little scenario. scenarios. One is that I, my default guard is always here, so if he moves away from me, I will just stay here. Yeah. I'm not going to start to like reach and sit up. I just stay. He, he has to come to me, depending on, on the rule sets. Yeah? Um, so, uh, there's a very little chance that he's going to turn around and run away from me. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's a street fighter, he's really scared of my guard, then he might run away. But apart from that, no, not really, yeah? So, okay. So, the first scenario is just, he would just lead with his front leg and, and try to knee slide, yeah? So, he would just knee slide a little bit and I catch it with that hook and I take his, his heel. Already here, now his knee slide is, is kind of dead. The more he pushes in, the, the more he's going to be stuck. Yeah? And I can take a little bit more pressure off with this ring. This, this is a good variation. There are like five different things I do with my leg and arm here, but the easiest one is just here. Yeah? So <clears throat> if I want to get the position, I'll be here and maybe I'll go a little bit sideways. So it looks just like, ah, knee slide, no. Yeah? And I get the position. So I just, kind of, I just kind of tease him with the knee slide and I catch it with the hook and, and catch to the heel. I go on, on there and I put my foot on his hip just to take the pressure. And now from here you can practice a little bit to put some weight into the knee side and just feel comfortable being compressed on bottom. Yeah? You're just going to compress the bottom. Like that. And again, don't set forward with this leg. Don't do it. Yeah? Keep it back. Other situation you could try is him just kind of not engaging. And I might sit here and I might move in and try to catch the position. Yeah, I'll have to do that sometimes. I can also pull guard from standing and go here, but I don't ever encourage pulling guard. So I can go here, maybe I'll grab something or use the post and try to get there. The most important thing is that I don't do anything like that. Yeah? I keep kind of, I keep compressed and then I get the position. So at no point do I give him the option of getting into this space where he needs to be to pass, okay? Let's see a little shot, just practice a little bit. 
knee slide, or you actually have to, have to go and catch it. So what's, what's really important at this stage, especially if you're not that uh, experienced, even though I said it was an advanced class, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So don't worry too much about like what ifs, you know? Because when we're talking about specifics, there's always like, I, ha I also have 25 options from here, right? But we cannot start going down every single road of like footlocks, leg drags, clearing, rolling, you know, all this stuff, yeah? Forget about it for now, just practice the optimal scenario. The optimal scenario for him is that he's got a good strong hook that kind of takes the pressure off and see how he can control the weight of my hip and he's got his toes in my, in my hip that really takes my, my, I should be able to just lean into him and he should be able to comfortably just do like leg presses, yeah? Like that. And one across the collar, forearm on my, on my chest and I should be able to lean all my weight in and it should be no issue for him, yeah? Uh, for now, just stay compressed. Yeah? Don't, don't actually do leg presses. Yeah? Just stay compressed and feel comfortable with, with my weight here. The grip on my heel must be kind of strong. Yeah? Uh, again, uh, or a little bit on the Achilles. Don't worry too much about me stripping this grip and all this stuff out. Forget about it for now. Yeah? Again, it's an advanced class. Usually I would spend one or two months on this at home three times a week at least to go through all the scenarios and drill it. But I'll try to introduce you to it. So this is the position, yeah? Now, um, as I said, every single, uh, almost every single, I would say 98 out of 100 uh, sweeps in, in the guard, I must touch both of his legs. Yeah? That's why when I, when I stand up in the guard, that's another class, but I will never walk in like this unless I really have to, yeah? All I, what I will do is always keep this leg back. Yeah, he, really, he has to get to this leg to do something really. You know? So I will always keep an angle wherever he's trying to, to catch it. Yeah? So that means on bottom, I'm just trying to find a way to get to that back leg. Yeah? So if he doesn't know what he's doing and he just steps forward, okay, now, it's, now my guard is over and I'm gonna sweep and submit. Yeah? But let's just imagine that he knows a little bit of what he's doing. So sometimes he feels like uh, he pressures into me, yeah? And he's stuck. He, he's not going anywhere in this pressure. So the first scenario that happens a little bit is that maybe he, he wants to clean this hook by like standing up like this, yeah? So he stands up to pull away, right? And if he straightens his leg completely, my hook goes up, yeah? So that's one strategy for him is to kind of pull out of the guard and not push into it. Because there is no, he cannot go this way. Right, he's completely stuck. So as he starts to pull away, there's a, just a tripod screen. Yeah? So all I do is, it's already set up. Yeah? He starts to pull away and look, I have one heel, one hip, and one heel. It's just kind of a quick one. And sometimes it works, sometimes not, but I can always try. Yeah? And of course, the moment we're here, now I have to wrestle. Yeah? It's not like he lands flat on his back, and I just get the, get the sweep. I have to get up and and start actually wrestling to finish. Yeah? That's another class also. But, so quick theory about uh, uh, tripod style sweeps, or pretty much it's any sweep basically. Um, if he stands in a straight line, like this, put your feet out on this line, please. They just stand in a, on, on a straight line. Oh, there's, there's a line right there, yes. So if you look at this from a drone perspective, you have his two bases, his feet and his hip. Yeah? If you look from above and they're on a straight line, he can keep his balance, yeah? If I can make, turn that into a triangle, so I have one, two, and three. Okay, you ready? Keep your feet where they are. All right. Now it's a triangle. Keep your feet. Then he's gonna fall, yeah? That's all I need to do. So, so here, is, here is how it works in practice, stand up. If I push his hip just like I did to make him fall, and you, try not to fall. Try not to fall. In, is that how you not fall? <laughs> try not to fall naturally. No, come on! I try, try not to fall. I try not to fall. I would not fall. If I come up and push you on the, on the street, no, don't fall. <laughs> okay. So why did he not fall? Not because he's doing this. Why did he not fall? He steps back. Yeah? So I, so I just need one assistant. To hold one foot, <laughs> hold one foot. 
Okay, and I push now, don't fall. I'll make it look natural. Don't, don't, don't be weird now. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. I think so, but that's okay. We still love you. Why does he not fall? Back. He steps back. Yeah, so uh, we need just one more system. Uh. <laughs> okay, so look natural and don't fall. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, so the theory is if I can just block both his feet from walking and I can move the hip, then I can make him fall. Yeah? That's pretty much every sweep you will see. Just basically like this, like this. Like this, like this, like this. You know, anything you can come up with. Even like this. Or even here, I block his feet by make his foot by making it heavy. So that's every sweep and pick up. Now <laughs> so from here, that's what I do. I block one foot, I am now this, and my right foot is now equal. And he tries to pull away. Yeah. Immediately up and fight for the hip and the legs. Okay. Ah, it's a very long explanation for something that's really simple. Okay, let's see. Put, pulls away, I just do I go. Huh? Let's try that one first. Really straightforward, yeah. Uh, it happens now and then if they have no idea what they're doing. But um, can really count on that for a, a higher level. So, so what this really is about one is that I kind of catch him in my perfectly closed posture, yeah, and he's kind of caught up in my guard, and it's really difficult for him here to open me up and, and get in here where he needs to pass. But what do I need to do to to uh, to sweep efficiently? I have to get to the, to the real end, yeah? either with my foot, as, as we just uh, saw, but even better with like more of my body. Yeah? I don't have a lot of control with his leg with one little hook. Sometimes he'll step out if he has good balance or I did the sweep to him enough times. So <clears throat> what I really want to do is get to both legs and get underneath him and then even better if I can drop his head and lift his butt. Then it's like Christmas in the guard. Yeah? So I need to get to the real leg. And what happens sometimes is that he just, it's, he steps forward a little bit, he makes this mistake and I literally just take it. Yeah, that's it. Now, if he makes that mistake, now I'm already sweeping and submitting him, yeah? So <clears throat> I cannot just like rely on that because I cannot just build my game around him not knowing what, what he's doing. But um, <clears throat> I need to, to force him to step forward, yeah? That's kind of my, my goal with this. And there are several ways I, I do that. And the simplest one I think to learn is that I create some kind of momentum using this leg and this arm. Yeah? So now it's super important that the thumb is down. If you still make this mistake, you will see that this is a very weak pull. Yeah? So what I do is like he keeps that leg back, hopefully, otherwise he's not a worthy opponent. Mm. Yeah? So I have him here and then I release this, this foot, a little bit of pressure. And usually he will he likes to pressure into this guy, yeah? Like that. So I keep him away. Now I open and then I use this leg and I swing. See that? I give it like a good momentum. And as I swing it, I also pull this over my head. And look what happens. Oh, it's amazing. So now I can take the leg. Yeah? And from here I am in a perfect position to play whatever guard game I like. Yeah? Because I pretty much did everything I want in the guard. I have control of both his legs. I'm underneath his, his center of gravity, it's, it's above me, and his head is, is, is low and his hip is high. Yeah? So whatever your game is from here, is like you, you pick and choose. Yeah? I could tell you the first 10 things I do, but it might not be yours. Yeah? So I really like to play into kind of x guard stuff, foot locks, uh, take the back, but uh, I mean, it would be an entirely different class. But if you can get to there, you can do what you want. Yeah? So I'm here, he's, he's really stuck, in my perfectly closed posture, and I find the time to release my leg, and I give it a good swing, and I pull like that, and all I want is that leg. Yeah? And sometimes I'll be here, sometimes I'll push him out, you know, sometimes I'll go here, sometimes he falls really far, and I attack the foot, 
Sometimes it's the back. You know, there's a million options from there. But the point is to get to anything that's, to be able to do anything, you need to break his, his, uh, his, his power first, yeah? So I'll go like that, pull. And all I need is that one little step, yeah? Sometimes it's, it's like an amazing, he almost like, flies over me, whoosh, like this, and I get to the leg, yeah? And sometimes it's just a tiny step, so his leg is far back, and it's just like, like this. That's it, that's all I need. Then I take it and I start to move move my hip underneath and play whatever game is good. Sometimes sweep, foot locks, X guard. Single leg X guard, wrestling, take the back, spin, spin bolo, all kinds of whatever. Yeah. Oh, just one last time. Like this. My leg is free, I go. And I just need that. This is enough for me. And from here you kind of have to figure out to put him in a position. If you don't know what you're doing, just maybe just try an X guard. This is a good start. Yeah. That's a fabulous position to sweep and attack. <laughs> okay, let's let's try. Let's see how that goes. Let's go. Okay, so Alex has the position, the grip. Yes, good. Like this, yeah? Okay, so, wait. Okay, so do the swing. Uh, go for it. Stop, stop, stop. If you can reach my leg, then don't do it, yeah? So, sometimes he's here, and he's so focused on pulling me over that he forgets my leg is literally within reach, yeah? So just don't do it, just, just take the leg. Yeah, that's it, and now move yourself under and push me a little bit, and now you, you are where you are. Yeah? Sometimes you're like, oh, I have to do that cool swing and pull him over, but it's literally you have to do that. Take the leg, like this, yeah? Of course, once he's done that a few times, I'm not falling for that shit again, so my leg is far back. Yeah, that's where it should be, right? So, do the, do the move now. Mm -hmm. uh, for real, now it's not a trap. Okay. okay. Yes. So what, for, so what I would like to see is that you really use your leg as a, this is a big chunk of meat that you have to swing. Yeah? So I just give you do this. <laughs> yeah? That's not gonna create momentum. So I have to take my leg and like do that. And, and here I am. Yeah, and I could keep this one on the on the collar to keep his, his head low, whatever I want. And it could be leg locks or anything here. Yeah? Um, but I want you to do this from, from here, you take the leg out and you go like. So it's a big whoosh. But if, the, if his rear leg is already within reach, don't worry about it. Just take the leg and then kind of scoot yourself under. Okay? Let's try. Go. Okay, so that's it a little practice. Um, there was a time where it was, this was a really trendy game. This was like what everyone was trying to learn was from here and then the usual thing would be to go underneath and swing under and, and go here. That was like the, that was super trendy. I don't know how long ago, does anyone remember? Seven. 10 years maybe or something like that. It also had the worst name ever, the Kiss of the Dragon. <laughs> I don't know how that name became like the popular name for it, but do the Kiss of the Dragon. Like, you can't coach like that. It's so awkward. Anyway, uh, it's not a bad thing, you know? But what I think is, is kind of bad is to have habits where you invert like this and have your opponents wait over to you. Yeah. You can do that for a few years, especially if you're young, but it's really not very healthy for your lower back, right? And I, I did this a lot when I was younger, like a lot of, of inverted guard, had competitions which would just smash me in inverted guard. And then I realized, why are we all 21 and have like back problems? And I was like, oh yeah, because inverted guard or anything here with weight on, what, what is this? What, what, what kind of, in weightlifting terms, what is this? Because right here, and I try to extend. What is this? Huh? It's like the worst ever deadlift. Like this. Yeah. Try to deadlift like this every day. 
for, for years and then wonder why you have back problems. Yeah? Uh, uh, so uh, jiu-jitsu is weightlifting where the weights move and, and resist. Yeah? So you, but you also have to lift them correctly. You cannot just grab weights like this and then just every day just stand like this with all your weight on. That would be horrible. Yeah? If you walk into a, 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 a gym, you walk up to a, a barbell and you start lifting it like this. Oh! Or people are going to come and stop you. Yeah? They're going to say, stop. Don't do it. You break your back. In jiu-jitsu, you can be like this and do the exact same motion for years and years and no one will say anything. Yeah? So, where's that? So, I, I had my periods of all this spinning upside down, having weight on me while my lower back is, is collapsed. Uh, horrible idea. Don't recommend it. I would say 2006. 15 years of pain in my leg now. So don't do that. Now, so that's why I really like to just force him to step forward like this. See, my lower back is not being compressed anyway, and I can get to the back leg, and from here I can play a lot of, of really nice games, yeah? If you're just a complete beginner in this kind of style, I recommend just looking into like basic X card. It's an absolutely wonderful game. It'll also teach you nice wrestling and get, get ups and proper posture, but that's another thing. So, um, so there's like a, a, an advanced version of making him step. It's all just making him step, yeah? So I could create the momentum with my leg and pull. Yeah, that's a nice way of doing it. But you also see how much I open up. Yeah, which is what I did not want to do, really. Yeah? So, uh, I do it differently, and I'm honestly not sure if I can completely explain what I do, because I don't really explain it, but let's try. Uh, I do this. <laughs> that's what I do. Like a corkscrew. And so I lift my, on my shoulder, and I, and I turn my butt, butthole that way. So, so, it looks like this. Yeah, and see what happens? His posture drops, he must step, and I'm here. Yeah. So I basically, with this structure, without opening it, I hold on. Sometimes I hold here, sometimes I go really deep like this. But with this structure of my legs and arms, without opening it, I extend and lift his hip, and then I turn. I rotate on my shoulder. I told you it was an advanced track. Yeah? So see what he has to do. He has to set. Try to keep that leg away from me. <coughs> keep it away from me. <laughs> I can't get it. Yeah? And if we go here, it's, it's foot back. fake foot back to pass. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, good luck. But I have no, I don't know if. Uh, same position here, but I can even do it without the collar, but this helps a little bit. What I need to do is lift and extend, and now my butt is turned this way, I need my butt to turn down. And here goes everything I want. Everything I want. All this stuff. Um, so, same thing, but without swinging the leg. Yeah, so it's a rotation like this. It's a corkscrew butt rotation. Just do this. I'm sure this is some gymnastics. Something. And if it doesn't work, try the other one. That's it. I will get to it. Yes. You want to give it a shot? Sure. Of course. Same grip. Same grip. So what you're trying to accomplish, you can hold there, you can go super deep, like this. You're trying to, with this structure, to lift my, you gotta talk. Lift my hip up super high, yeah? And then rotate your butt this way, towards the windows, okay? <laughs> Point your butt to this, okay, let's go. And lift, and lift. That's it, yes. And now you have my leg. Perfect, yeah? Good. Very nice. Okay, let's try. So, there is the easier version. Like everybody can do that. Swing the leg and pull. Yeah, everyone can do that. But that's also a little bit more risky because you open up more. Yeah, so if it fails, you don't have this structure. There's the more difficult version where you just stay right here and then start to lift and get to the back leg. But don't forget, the only purpose of all of it it's literally just for him to be able to reach my back leg. There's nothing more, yeah? So don't try to do like a big, wild swing. So I go like that. He just needs me to do this, go. 
That's it, done. Yeah. Now my leg is within reach, and sometimes he will have to reach a little bit far, then he has to adjust so he can pull himself in, kick, my, kick me away, adjust to get underneath me. Yeah? Uh, but that's, there's a little more to, not more to it. So let's try to do just a few, five minutes of just practicing, so you get a new partner, and you take turns, maybe let's say we're here, yeah, either I'm here and I scoot in, like that, I start to lift, I go. Get any position. I mean, you can finish from here or not. I just walk. Yeah? I know this is a enormous game to explain from being underneath. Yeah? Then it's his turn. He can. Yeah, maybe let's say I go for. A, we choose a knee slide. He locks me up. And if I make this mistake, he will just go. Yeah. Don't don't fall in the trap of feeling that you have to move me. Yeah. If the leg is here, just take it and and go. Yeah. But if not, he will try to either swing or lift. Yes. Oh, he can do it. Perfect. Perfect. Good. That's it. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Uh, so you just do one and one, and then you grab a new partner. Yeah? And this is how you grab a new partner. You put your hand up. You look around. Who has their hand up? Let's imagine there's one there. I go right away. Yeah? Don't stand like this. And don't keep your hand up like that. Yeah? So it's one, one new partner. So you get to try a little bit with different bodies. Don't stress it and go super fast. Just go nice and slow. You could even, if you want, you can start standing. I, I, every time you pull guard for almost to the kitten, but you can just allow you like this. Yeah, and if it's tough, uh, difficult, just do the swing. I do the swing with the leg guard then as well. Yeah. That's it, and then he goes one, and we grab a new partner. So for five minutes, you get to do single repetitions with different bodies, okay? Let's try that, go. Obviously, it takes a little bit more practice than this, but um, if nothing else, if everything else fails for you, at least I, it's just not a bad idea to build your guard around a st structure like this. Yeah. Uh, if you have to pick a guard to play for a long time, pick something that's that's uh, compressed. Yeah. From here, it's 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 safer, right? and it will take much less effort to to defend this guard when you if you can attack from here than if you have to really extend to attack. Yeah? So. Um, uh, I played this for like 15 years, something I really like that position. Also, it's, I think it's healthy for my back as well to be just here and nice and compressing. I like it, it works for me. Uh, so, um, uh, I hope you can use it, probably not for most of you, but if you cannot, then at least just remember this about playing a guard that's really tight and closed. Yeah? And if they step into it, then you're still here and just try to stay safe from here and lock them down. Sweep or not, playing, getting underneath the opponent or not, that, that may or may not be a thing, but at least play a guard where you can lock them up from here, and you don't have to lock them up like that. Yeah? I'm not saying spider guard is bad, I'm just saying this takes more effort if it fails. If this fails, you're literally exactly where you want to be. Right? So, uh, that's the class, play with it. If you have any questions or during the, the, the week or any time, please feel free to grab me. I'll be at the open mat, so. Okay, thank you.